Medical Student, I'm a medical student at the Brown University Medical College. And I'm very proud to present the study that with my colleagues who have been working on for several months now, we are evaluating the effectiveness of 3D printing and liver surgery. So let me start off by some very basic information and why did we choose liver surgery. First of all, liver surgery is very complex and it's technically demanding field. Those procedures get very complex due to mainly complex anatomy. And there are many challenges during the liver resections, including access to vena cava, access to hepatic veins, their proximity to liver tumors or liver transections. And those procedures get even more technically demanding if you want to proceed with minimally invasive approach. And most of the liver resections at our clinic are performed laparoscopically. So that requires even more skilled surgeon, even more experienced one. However, it has some benefits. So patients who are undergoing the laparoscopic liver resections tend to stay a shorter time after the surgery in the hospital and they require less opioids in the post-op phase. But we need to plan those operations very precisely and we are looking for the tools that will allow us to visualize the specific patient anatomy, uh, ideally in a three-dimensional space. So that was one of the reasons why we looked at the 3D training as a potential technique to help us visualize the patient's anatomy. And we did some research on how to create those models. But early we learned that it will be pretty difficult since most of the previously described methods are extremely expensive. If you want to create full-size transparent model that will show you specific patient anatomy and that will bring you most information that you need to plan the surgery, those models can get as expensive as four or even five thousand dollars per one model. And really no one can afford it, especially if you need very professional equipment to do that. So we started to work on our own approach. And after a few months of research, we came up with the idea and we are now able to create same model, full-size, patient-specific for $100 to $150. So how do we do that? And how do you create 3D models from, for specific patient in general? First, you need some sort of medical imaging data. We usually use CT scans, but we also have experience with MRI scans, and we also created one model based on a PET CT scan. So all you need to have is some sort of medical imaging data. And you perform a, ta a task called segmentation. A segmentation is a task where you are separating specific anatomical structures. In our case, we are segmentating vessels, we are segmentating tumor, and the liver parenchyma itself. Segmentation allows you to have 3D virtual models. Those models help you prepare for printing. So once you have your vir virtual model ready, make sure that everything is the specific right place, you print out those, model, those um, elements. And we have a structure which is really a mold-like structure, and we fill it, fill it up with silicone, with transparent silicone, with, which allows us to have this major significant reduce of costs. And as a result, we get a transparent, full-sized, patient-specific liver model, which has all the elements that were seen on a CT. And I have one of those models today here with me, so please feel free to take a look at that. And I'm not going to deep into the methodology of creating those models. Uh, we were fortunate to publish a paper on the technical note on how to make those models. And uh, if you want to learn more about the methodology, please feel free to read it. And uh, I want to talk more about the possible implementations because I talked mostly about how those models can be used in planning surgeries and guidance during the procedures. However, we found out that there are even more implementations, maybe even more beneficial. So what we are doing right now as well, we take those models and we go to patients and we talk with patients about the procedure. We talk with them about very basic concept of anatomy or physiology. We talk with them about the surgery they are about to undergo and about the possible complications. And we found out that they, those models work great when explaining even very basic tasks. So uh, right now we are also evaluating how those models will quantitatively result in the patient's knowledge, but very early the results are promising. And the third field that we are feeling very great about uh, is the medical education. We found out that uh, those models can be used in a great manner with medical students or even young doctors and uh, surgical residents. You could use those models to explain uh, concepts like division of liver into segments or explain different kinds of liver resections. And I really believe that uh, our project shows you that 
modern technologies, including 3D printing, can change the whole treatment process from the very beginning, from planning the surgery and uh, getting an informed consent through guidance during the complex procedures, all the way to the medical education. And 3D printing is definitely a field and a tool that should be looked by surgeons all over in many, many different disciplines. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them and thank you for your attention. Actually, several. First, uh, let me congratulate you on your wonderful English, uh, nice vocabulary, and very nice presentation that certainly makes a good start for a very good presenter in the future. Uh, it was very nice to listen to your presentation, so congratulations. Uh, second, uh, I love all student-based or student-performed research or experiments that are done by students. And it's again something you should be proud of. You developed something on your own, of your own brains and hands, and that's very nice. Not to mention that something cutting costs in uh, modern medicine is uh, something to compliment. I've had the model in my hands, I can see many possible uses for that. So those were the positive comments. And now, in your abstract, you included actually some part of the research part of the protocol that the data were gathered. But you didn't mention anything in your presentation nor in your abstract. Hence my question. Uh, this is developmental phase. Beautiful. What is the research? Uh, I would love to, and we are running some trials. So we are running several of them. One of them is the most important part, is evaluating whether those models have quantitative impact on the short-term surgical outcomes. And we have some early results, and I was battling with myself whether I should then put them in a presentation, but they are not statistically significant yet. We don't have that many patients. And uh, at first, when I was writing the abstract, I was thinking that I should put them in, but right now, I'm not a, I, I would feel bad if I showed the results that are not statistically significant. So, um, oh, I, I would love to results do Results are results. Sometimes, yeah, so, so, sometimes they are not statistically significant, which means there is no difference. Yeah, yeah, it was, mm, oh, they might be not um, sound in terms of uh, proving or disproving a concept, but anyway, in the research-based session, that's an important factor. Uh, I would certainly <coughs> encourage you that you pursue that uh, uh, thing, including perhaps some uh, uh, analysis also of patient's uh, satisfaction, because that's also possible. Just to give voice to our, our, our other referees, I will just uh, stay at this uh, moment. Congratulations on a very nice work. Thank you. That's, of course, an uh, impressive thing to hold such a transparent lever in your hands. And uh, there were several data uh, from the literature that uh, uh, it's uh, uh, a good tool, uh, but probably not in all liver surgeries. There is, some, of course, there are different types of surgeries, different types of tumors, locations. So in uh, uh, a small uh, tumor, primary or metastatic, which requires lateral disegmentectomy or segmentectomy, uh, it may be of no use. However, uh, it's uh, more important for procedures which are with tumors, uh, a borderline tumors, which, are, which we think if we could resect it or not. However, that's, it also needs uh, kind of a kind of an uh, imagination from a surgeon who will look at the model and after that who will look at the organ in the operating field especially in laparoscopic surgery where, when you can't touch it with your hand and uh, so uh, it's a uh, next step is how to transfer this we see on the model to the operative field. 
and that I hope that your research uh, also also will show to the surgical community what is the possibility of transferring the data we have from the model to a real life to operating room. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. If I may comment on that, like there are some papers that are trying to achieve what you mentioned. And uh, there are some researchers that are trying to improve those models by giving it an even more realistic feel to that. So they, uh, they want to make the materials make it more life lifelike so that they can use it in the laparoscopic uh, trainings. And using their training, you can actually perform the same surgery that you are going to perform it in real life after that. So that would be even more beneficial, but it's hard to achieve due to the um, choice of the materials. That you need a very good grant for it. Yes, I will. Any questions from the audience? Yeah, I've got a question. Uh, how much time does it take to prepare such a model? And can it be used in, for example, emergency surgery? So it takes about once we get the CT scan.